Hey everyone, Arcade here to bring you my two cents on a game you just might want to add to your October spooky game backlog. Today, we look at Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Let's talk about it. Resident Evil 7 was released January 24th, 2017 for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. So what's going on in this game? You play as Ethan, a guy who's done nothing with his life for the past three years except miss his girlfriend, Mia, who one day vanished into thin air. She didn't literally vanish into thin air because as far as I can tell she isn't a magician, but she did kind of just disappear one day. And now, after after three years, and I'm assuming multiple countless nights cradling a bottle of scotch to dull his crippling loneliness, Ethan gets a message from Mia saying she's still alive. She's been on a multiple year-long vacation to the sticky sweaty swamps of Louisiana and is finally ready for her boy to come and pick her up. So it's off to the bayou and into one heck of a wacky zany adventure for our man Ethan. Because what should be a simple reunion and a touching love story quickly devolves into madness paranoia, and a loss of appendages. This was my first Resident Evil game, and I had no issues understanding what was going on, which was nice. This game serves as a sort of reboot for the Resident Evil series, as well as a great place for newcomers to the series to jump in. Since I have no idea what has transpired within the first six games, I honestly can't critique how well this entry ties into the rest, but I can say with certainty that it served as a great entry point into Resident Evil as a whole. The story here is interesting, gripping, and an all-around good spooky time to be had, and so are the characters. Oh man, the characters here are worth mentioning as well. The Baker family specifically, who you meet fairly early on, felt like antagonists ripped straight from a horror film. Something about how much depth and thought went into these characters really stood out. You've got Leatherface, the bug bitch, young Jigsaw, and Mama Murphy. Their interactions with both you and one another felt so genuine and believable, and even though I was always in danger when I was in their presence, I enjoyed seeing them on screen whenever they showed up. The game leaves you wanting to learn more about this family, and there's no doubt that you will. How about the presentation? From the very first cutscene, I was honestly a bit blown away by how this game looked. I wasn't expecting so much detail to be found here, and I was pleasantly surprised. Granted, there are some textures here or there that look kind of muddied and bleh, specifically in outdoor areas, but for the most part, everything looks great, especially indoors, which is where the majority of the game takes place. There is heavy amounts of detail found in Resident Evil 7's House of Horrors, from the clutter piled up in seemingly every corner of every room, to the way the lights create a heavy contrast of illumination and shadow in every direction you look, which reminds me, the lighting here is absolutely on point. I normally don't comment on things like lighting in a video game, but here, it definitely deserves some recognition. From the god rays shining between trees as the sun begins to set, or the dim, flickering fluorescent lights that illuminate the lower floor of the home. It all looks stunning. Graphically, this game truly is something to marvel at. Sound-wise, it's alright. Some of the sound effects, specifically on the guns, didn't have enough oomph to them. They almost felt muted, for lack of a better term. And that's a shame, as that's usually the first sound you hear that breaks the thick fog of silence that coats this game. Speaking of which, speaking of which, a lot of the horror going on here relies on the game's use of silence. Walking through the halls of the estate, you're usually not going to hear much more than the sound of your footsteps. Maybe there's an occasional creak here or there, or maybe there's a grandfather clock ticking away in the distance. Other than that, it's only you and the crippling sound of uneasy silence. Although this may sound like a bad thing, it actually makes the game that much more intense, because you end up reacting more to every little sound. Every creak or thud you hear immediately gets your blood pumping and your heart racing. Music only shows up once in a while to remind you that your heart rate can go higher than it already is, even if your character's run speed stays the same. It's harsh and full of unnerving swells. There was nothing memorable about it, to be honest, but it sure as hell put me on the edge of my seat any time I was running for my life. Voice acting is worth mentioning here also. These characters did a great job of portraying their respective roles, making each and every character here feel like real people. There's a nice array of emotion shown by some of these characters, and I can't think of one person that felt significantly weaker than the rest. I feel that's a rare thing for the voice acting in games to accomplish. Overall, the presentation here is great. There are a few things that bothered me here or there, but nothing that ruined my playtime through the game. And finally, the gameplay. Most of the time, you're going to be exploring and looking for items to help you progress through whatever place you're in. There's a nice level of puzzle solving here, full of a few aha moments here and there. I honestly felt a little bit like I was part of the mystery gang from Scooby-Doo, checking out a derelict abandoned farmhouse, looking for clues. The puzzles themselves aren't too annoying, as the answer is usually fairly straightforward and never too obscure. What I did find a bit annoying at times, though, was the fact that you usually had someone, or something, patrolling the immediate vicinity while you're searching for keys, clues, and chem fluid. A lot of these enemies can't be killed, in which case the game becomes a bout of cat and mouse. It's not difficult or anything, but it can be slightly frustrating to deal with. Other enemies can be killed though, but it's not always the wisest choice to spray bullets into something's face, as your current gun may not do too much damage. There's something in this game called resource 
management, and I highly recommend refining your skills in that department before jumping into this. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. And with all the puzzle solving, fine aiming, and critical thinking, you're bound to get a little bit worn out. Luckily, the game knows that and wants to give you a chance to relax. That's why they decided to include VHS tapes that you can find throughout your adventure, just for your viewing pleasure. Throw one of these bad boys into your nearest cassette player, grab some poppet corn, and enjoy a good old home movie. These cassettes serve as a backstory for some of the characters, as well as clues to help you find your next objective. There's also a crafting system and inventory management to further occupy you. Be sure to look around everywhere you can for supplies, and only carry what you absolutely need, as your inventory will fill up quickly. Thankfully, the game gives you storage in most safe rooms to allow you to hoard the majority of items you find. There's not much depth to the crafting here, which is fine. Resident Evil was never known for its RPG elements. You find ingredients in the world and use said ingredients to make things like healing items, ammunition, and STIMULANTS. One last thing I feel I should mention is that the majority of this game takes place in the Baker household, but it does open up a bit more toward the end. There's also a bit of a genre shift further into the game, if you can call it that. It's a bit difficult to explain and I won't say too much as not to spoil it for anyone who's yet to play it, but by the time the credits roll, you'll be way more of a badass than you were at the start. Do I have opinions? Yeah, I have opinions. Like the color blue is a better color than yellow. Oh, do I have an opinion on Resident Evil 7? Oh yeah, I do. It's a damn good horror game. That's my opinion. I had to stop playing this game with headphones on because I'm a baby and got spooked one too many times. How anyone could play through this in VR is insane to me, and props to you if you've accomplished such a brave feat. This is a genuinely great horror game. Its spooks go beyond cheap jump scares and visual gore. The game as a whole plays on your psyche and doesn't let up in its roughly 12 hour runtime. If you're looking for a good game to get into the spoopy spirit with, I'd say maybe look into Resident Evil 7. It's so good, you know I've just gotta say it. It's DEFINITELY WORTH FULL PRICE. So that was my two cents on on Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. If you enjoyed the review, maybe support the channel by clicking the whatever, hitting that other whatever, and I'll see you all next time.